Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. These are going to be the most exciting lessons that I have ever taught. And how many times have you say that? But this is going to be the only hope of the world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. And the first thing that we're going to learn is the first Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. The Bible is one book, perfect unity. And we just had the two Bible verses. I want you to remember to study the Ten Commandments and learn them. This is important in all of these lessons that we're going to be teaching. And John 17, 3 says, This is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. From Genesis to Revelations, the Bible bears witness to one God. The revelation, total revelation concerning Christ. The Bible forms one continuous story, the story of humanity in relation to God. The Bible is a progressive unfolding of the truth. Revelation 21.5, these words are faithful and true. Revelation 22.6, these words are faithful and true. This is something that you need to memorize and know what this book is all about. And God is right in all his ways and holy in all his works. This book is God's love letter to the whole world. Proverbs 30, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. Proverbs 30, verse 6. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Lying is one of the greatest sins today. Deception. We're living in the days of deception. This is why we must get back to the Word of God. The Word of God solves every problem that we will ever face. From Genesis, we see the beginning. The beginning to read the Bible has one great theme. This is the beginning all the way through. The person and work of Christ. From beginning to in testifies of one redemption. Now this is important because in Christ we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Ephesians 1, 7. Even the forgiveness of sin. Only Christ can forgive sin. These are the most important truths that the world 
needs today. And then we see in all of this, this also is the riches of his glory. And we're going to learn about riches that no person ever needs to be poor in the world because Christ came from heaven to go to the cross and die that we could have eternal life and he became poor that we could become rich. This is the most important truth in the world today. And then we see in John 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1, 1. In the book of John 1, 1, we see, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We see the deity of Jesus Christ. Only deity is to be worshiped. So we see in this lesson, in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was God, and Jesus was with God. He is from eternity to eternity. And then we see in John 1, 14. Now this is his incarnation. That means he had to come in human form as Jesus. He had to become man to go to the cross and die. And he is the Son of God. John 1, 14. And the Word, Jesus Christ is the living Word, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. Now this is a heavenly divine message. And listen what his word says. This is so important that as many as receive him, you have to receive a gift before you know the meaning of that gift. So the incarnation of the eternal word and son of God, himself, Jesus, was God. He, he was always God, and he was truly man and truly God. In Jesus Christ, to reveal in the terms of human life, that's what his incarnation was. And that as many as believed on him, on Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you have to believe he's the Son of God, may have eternal life. This is whosoever believeth in him, Jesus Christ, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now that is John 3, 15. And most people know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now let me ask you a question, because we know that in Hebrews it says that people all of their lifetime have fear of death and bondage. If you have fear, you're in bondage. So we do not have to fear death as a child of God because his word plainly teaches we have eternal life. And we just read that. So here is what we need to do as a child of God. Now I want you to listen to this. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. I got it messed up, so forgive me. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So here we have sin and death. This is the most amazing story in the world. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So here's what we need to do. Accept this gift, and we have eternal life. So what do you want to do today? Do you want to have fear of death? Or do you want to know that when we, as a body of believers, 
when we take our last breath, we are absent from the body and present with the Lord because we have a soul and a spirit after we are born again by the Spirit of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to learn more about this in these lessons. So if you have fear of death today, receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. The eternal divine word of God from John 1, 1 through 14. John 1, 3, all things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life. That's the only way you can have eternal life. And the life was the light of men. John 1, 1, when everything which has begun, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, began the Word. The Word was. Alone, it did not begin. The Word was already. Because Jesus is from eternity to eternity. The foundation of the universe is luminous. It is the Word. In Genesis 1-1, we already quoted that, and you need to know that Bible verse. So create means the divine and sovereign act of bringing into existence that which was not. Used solely in association with deity, the Son of God. The Son of God is the creator. He is eternal. And he is the living word. And he is our redeemer. He is the light of the world. The universe did not come from nothing. It came from God. It owes its existence to nothing but God's will and God's word. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This is how we are to live this life according to the principles that he has laid down for us. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace today to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We thank Thee and praise Thee that we have a great high priest that is faithful and merciful, and He is our advocate, He is our mediator, He is our intercessor. And we thank Thee that we can come into the holiest by the blood with a true heart and full assurance of faith that whatsoever we ask according to faith in this word, Jesus Christ is the object of all this living word. And that is, faith has to have a foundation, and that foundation is the word of God. And it promises us that whatsoever we ask, if we ask for 100 fold, that means every person that's listening today can receive the gift of eternal life and believe that you will never die according to God's word. And we thank them, praise thee for 100 fold today. And we're asking for every person to see Christ in these living words, the shining light of the glory of Christ. His voice is powerful. His voice is full of majesty. We are to see him in these words that are living words. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So we're seeing in these lessons what creation means. It owes its existence to nothing but God's will and God's word. 
we must always remember that this is how powerful his word is. His word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Do you know that his word is the sharpest and the most powerful weapon under heaven? And he says in Hebrews 11:3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Psalm 33, 6, in the beginning was the word, and by the word, the Lord, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. By the word, Jesus Christ, of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. By the word, Jesus is the word. We have the Trinity here. By the word of the Lord, that is our heavenly Father, and the breath of his mouth, is the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That is Elohim in the Bible. His name is mentioned 2,500 times. That is a little song I'm going to give you right now. God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, three and one, one and three, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are co-equal. They are co-eternal. Perfect unity. That's what this body of believers are to be. Unity. The blood unites us into one body. There can be no division where Christ is. This is what we must learn in these lessons. And then we see also in Genesis 1, chapter 2, to verse 2, 3, creation account begins and leaves no doubt that it is the revelation. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 14, gives a process by which a truth possesses from the mind of God to the mind of his people. Remember, in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This is how we learn the word of God through the Holy Spirit. And I want you to listen to what John chapter 16 tells us about the Holy Spirit. And this is something that I want you to study the book of John because we're going to be having lessons on the book of John because it teaches the word to true believers. It is for the gospel for believers. There's only 21 chapters. And I want you to study it and learn it so you can know these truths. That's the first book that you read, and you can learn all of these truths. But the Comforter, now this is when Jesus was on the earth, the Holy Spirit is called a Comforter. He said in verse 16, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So our teacher is the Holy Spirit, and we cannot worship apart from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our teacher, and we worship in spirit and in truth. This is the only way that we can worship him. That's why we have to 
be born again before we can worship God. And then we see man is unable by searching to solve the mystery of creation. No human being knew anything about the origin of the heavens of the earth. Only through the word of God we can see in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. 2 Corinthians 13, 8, For we can do nothing against this truth, but for this truth. Proverbs 20, verse 30, There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. This is true wisdom today. This is what the world needs. And this is something that we can understand as we are a child of God. The Spirit of God reveals these truths to us. And listen what 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8 teach us. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. You see, we should see the shining light of the glory of Christ when this word is taught, which none of the rulers of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But in his resurrection, you see, the crucifixion atones our sins. The resurrection eradicates our sins. He never remembers them no more. And then we see the scriptures were given not to tell us how the heavens go, but to teach us how to get to heaven. Now, I'm going to give this to you today because this is the most important thing. And I would like to ask you, after I'm finished with this lesson, I would like for you to give me just yourself, not to me on my, the air, but in your heart, I want you to give me what you have learned through these lessons because you write it down. And if you write these things down, you will remember them. John 3, 16. Memorize this Bible verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You will never die. Now you put your name here. For God so loved you, that he gave his only begotten son, that if you believe in him, you will never die because your soul can't die and your spirit can't die. And it is the blood that makes an atonement for your souls. This is how you will know that you are a child of God only by the word of God. And then he says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What truths these are for every person that is listening today. And this is what w the world needs. That's the only hope of the world. It owes its, this, this existence of the world, it owes its existence to nothing but God's will and God's word. So this is what we are teaching you, that this is what God wants you to know. This is what God wants you to know. This is the most important thing that you can ever learn. So let me ask you a question. The Spirit of God comes to dwell in your body. Now, I have to give you that Bible verse so you will know that this is God's Word. And this is in 2 Peter 
chapter 1. And he says, this is, a, you memorize this also. He says, verse 4 of chapter 1 of Second Peter, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we might be partaker of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You see, our bodies are to be holy, acceptable unto the Lord. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto him, which is his divine service. And be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the spirit of your mind. Remember, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Be renewed in your mind. This is why we're not to be conformed to the world. The world is enmity to this book. Be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the spirit of your mind that you may know thy perfect and acceptable will of God, laboring fervently in prayer that we will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. What glory this is for every person that is listening today. And while you're in Second Peter, if you do like me, when people preach the word, you want to hear what it says. So the same thing he says in Second Peter chapter 1, verse, this is a very powerful word, and I want you to think about this also. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Second Peter 1, verse 2. According as his divine power hath given unto you all things that pertain to life and godliness. And this is whereby, listen at this, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Virtue means moral excellency. This is his word. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now this is what we, every good and perfect gift comes from him. Then we'll go and get some more. You bring